We're here with uh, Erica Johnson, who is one of the multitude of candidates uh, running for the uh, Democratic nomination, the uh, 19th Middlesex District, uh, to succeed uh, re longtime representative Jim Maselli. Um, first off, Erica, I guess the, the basic question and probably the, the one that everyone would ask you off the top is, um, what prompted your decision to run? What made you decide that um, this would be a good time to to jump in for your first uh, run in elected office? Sure. So for me, this is a two-part question. Um, first part is I worked for Representative Miss Ellie one summer um, in college, and that for me was an eye-opening experience. At the time, I had just declared my political science degree and trying to figure out what I wanted to do with it. Um, so working with him, I did everything from studying policy to doing um, going to committee meetings with him, summarizing bills, and even consulting with him on all the nuances of certain bills that were coming up, um, as well as constituent services. And the constituent services aspect was really the piece that stuck with me. Um, just seeing in that position the, the power you have in order to make a real difference in people's lives. I mean, we worked with a lot of uh, residents of Wilmington and Tuxbury, whether it be housing issues, education, um, family issues, everything. So just to be able to have a position where you can make such a difference really stuck with me. And I knew that one day that this was one an office that I did want to run for. Second part was um, when Representative Ms. Ellie passed away, um, I, he already had an opponent um, who was running on her platform of being pro-life and anti-sanctuary city. I knew that someone needed to step up, so she didn't run uncontested and decided that um, my voice would be best. Um, I got a lot of calls of encouragement, including First Ask of America, who ultimately endorsed me. They recruit and train pro-choice women, so they were very excited and really um, motivated me to get involved. Excellent. Excellent. Um, now, you are one of the younger candidates who's, who's running in this. What do you say uh, to those people who would say um, that you're too young to run for this, that you don't have the, uh, the life experience yet to, to run yeah. for office like this? So I think it's time for a young person. I think that we are in a position in this country where young people are saddled with student loan debt. They're saddled with the decisions of the generations before us. It's really time for a young person to be in there and to really legislate with future generations in mind. We have all of these older politicians that are up there in Beacon Hill have been in for years and years. They're, they're really disengaged from what's going on with the young people. It's so important that when you make any legislative decision, you're thinking about current generations, but also the future. Because whatever impact it has now, it's going to have it down the line as well. Um, when I do get that question, I also go back to my background. Um, I was a political science major in college, really used Representative Maselli's office to get a firm understanding of state politics, went on interned for, in the Senate down in D.C. for a semester, and got a real feel for how the federal policies work. It was really great to have that perspective because it made you appreciate Massachusetts so much. Um, so many of the things that we have already you know, heard about, passed, and moved on from, they're just starting to talk about in D.C. Um, sure. So you, you can really see the effects on the local level. Um, I also was really involved with the College Democrats. I was elected president my junior and senior year. I worked, I was also elected student senator, and then eventually was student affairs chair. And in that capacity, I was really the voice for the student body. So I was meeting with the dean, the president, at, everyone in between and serving as the voice for the students. Um, we've had, I've worked with public safety to go over hate crimes and how we respond to that. We've talked about sexual assault on college campuses and really making reforms with the people who are most affected by it in mind. You mentioned about uh, a lot of folks up on Beacon Hill who've been there a long, long time. Mm -hmm. uh, and frankly, uh, uh, a couple of the candidates that ran uh, against Representative Maselli over the years 
uh, had made mention of that, and made mention of needing new voices and whatnot. Um, as you run, are you somebody who's in favor of the idea of term limits on uh, for the state legislature? Yeah. Well, first I want to say that Representative Vassali did a great job um, <clears throat> advocating for these two towns. <coughs> My goodness. Um, and he did a great job while he was in there. Um, but we're at a point in our in our political world where you look at the leadership that's in the House right now and they're really not speaking for future generations. I mean, the House just put put through a bill that left out ELL students and low-income students. You know, are we really, we call ourselves Democrats, but it's really important. I mean, we passed the most progressive platform in post, oh my goodness. At our convention last year, we passed the most progressive platform in the whole country. Yet, if you look at the voting records of most of the people who have been there for years and years and years, they're not reflected in that. So, as a party who has the majority, it's really important that we are thinking about future generations and we're, we're looking at how the majority of people are actually thinking. The, a lot has been made um, in regional news and, and a little bit even in national news uh, that Massachusetts is the one state in the union right now that has not passed its budget yet. Uh, so as you look at that as a candidate and the fact that uh, the legislature hasn't finished its business, hasn't uh, Got the budget done. What are your thoughts on that as far as um, the process, as far as maybe how it can be improved? Or, or I mean, is this as some people have said it's embarrassing for the state that it hasn't been that it hasn't been able to finish it up yet? It is. I mean, besides having a Republican governor who's pretty moderate, um, we have the majority in the House and the Senate, and the fact that as Democrats we can't work together to get that passed is really frustrating. Um, I think we, in the, the budget is a reflection of your values. How much and what you're appropriating to really shows what your state stands for. Massachusetts has been a leader for years and years, and this is frankly embarrassing. Um, I think it's really important that we start thinking about the budget in a tactful way and really work um, to make sure it passes on time. Excellent. Um, as uh, as a candidate, you've had a chance. Uh, you grew up here in Wilmington, uh, but I'm sure you've had a chance to uh, get out and about in both communities, have a chance to talk with people in both communities. What are you hearing from uh, residents in these towns of, of what is on their mind? What what is at the the top of their list of concerns? So talking to everyone, everyone has a story about how Representative Miss Ellie has helped them, their family, their loved ones. Um, I think constituent services is really top of mind. People really want to make sure that there's someone up on Beacon Hill that's fighting for them, is there to listen, is accessible. Um, that's something that part of Ms. Sully's legacy that I absolutely want to continue. I think that that's really important that people have, especially being in the state legislature where you can make the most impact. All politics is local, as Tip O'Neill said. Um, right. So I totally believe in that. Um, also just infrastructure. Route 38 runs through, the, it's the heart of our district, connecting 495, 128, everybody uses these roads to get through. Um, the fact that there's so many vacant storefronts and also just the condition of the road. If there's so many potholes and construction failures, um, people aren't even paying attention to the local businesses that are along it. Excellent. The, some of the candidates that are running, uh, some are newcomers like yourself, but some are, are familiar names. Uh, the uh, selectmen from uh, Wilmington, the selectmen from Tewksbury. Um, uh, how are you going about um, looking to kind of set yourself apart and, and get people to know who Erica Johnson is? Yeah, so one thing from the beginning was um, as the Wilmington Democratic Town Committee Chair, um, I've met a lot of people, I've been to the state party conventions for six years in a row. Um, I went this year, didn't see any of my Democratic opponents there. Um, I, I've been very open from the beginning as running as a progressive, um, while everybody else is kind of hanging out in the who's more moderate realm. 
Um, I've been really focusing on the issues, talking to working families, um, and just really putting myself out there in terms of the issues and in terms of my policy platform, um, and just getting to talk to people and not fighting over who's the most moderate and who's, you know. Right. The, and that's something that, that it, it, it seems you mentioned um, uh, the group that uh, uh, in, had endorsed you uh, uh, that is uh, uh, looking to uh, kind of empower and help out uh, uh, pro-choice candidates. Um, has there been, as you have seen, um, has there been kind of a... Uh, Call it a reinvigoration uh, over the last year or two of the uh, more progressive wing of the Democratic Party. Do you see that has has there been um, uh, kind of an injection of, of new passion, maybe uh, in that in that section of the party? Do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can really tie it back to when Bernie Sanders ran uh -huh. in the primary and just how many young people non-voters he turned out um, and then after he, he eventually lost to Hillary Clinton our revolution came up in Massachusetts um, which is really devoted to those policies progressive Massachusetts who's also endorsed me um, has really made a, a surge in the state I think it's just really important that the Democratic Party has been so establishment for so long that it's really leaving people out so it's important as a progressive to reach out to those people who felt like they've been left behind by the stereotypical Democratic Party. Sure, sure. Uh, and, and it seems as though uh, the it seems as though the the progressive side of the Democratic Party has learned a little bit uh, learned a little bit from the 2016 election, uh, where the. Uh, kind of the far right of the Republican Party carved out a niche for itself uh, in their primaries and uh, not only had uh, Donald Trump nominated, but also in, in a lot of congressional races. It seemed as though uh, the, uh, the more defined, uh, the candidates with the more defined platform uh, seemed to set themselves apart a little bit. So I, I can see that uh, being the case here. Um, do you also see, uh, I know that, that there is a group that has been helping uh, uh, female candidates also um, uh, and has been trying to encourage more female candidates running. Is that something that you've uh, seen uh, this campaign season? Are there more women running and uh, what are your thoughts on that? Definitely. Um, I think 2016 really ignited a, a passion in a lot of people. Um, people who didn't think that they would ever run for office are suddenly finding themselves out there campaigning. Um, I think that these groups have found a lot more people. Emerge Massachusetts, which is they're recruiting Democratic women to run. Um, I've been trying to get in for a long time, but our schedule just never meshed. Um, they said that they've, they've seen their numbers double to the point where they're, they're having a hard time um, getting everyone in to be trained, who wants to be trained. Wow. Um, there's, a there's just a lot of movement. I was also endorsed by Run For Something, and if you look through there, and it's, it's endorsing progressive young leaders of the future. Um, a lot of women in there as well, across the country, which is fantastic. And you see it across Massachusetts. We have Ayanna Presley, who is um, challenging Mike Capuano, a longtime incumbent. Um, I'm totally blanking on her name, but there's another woman who is running against Richard Neal. Mm -hmm. We're seeing it all over the place, and it's it's great. <laughs> is that good to see um, uh, where um, it used to be that uh, the party of an incumbent would uh, kind of defer and say, "Hey, you know what? We're not gonna we're not gonna put up. You know, we're not." We're going to discourage any challengers to our incumbent candidate because we don't want to have a um, kind of an in-party fight. We don't want to help out the other side. But I am seeing more of that this year. More uh, Republicans challenging Republican incumbents, Democrats challenging Democratic incumbents. Do you see that? Um, it used to be believed 
that that was something that would weaken the party. Do you believe that that can weaken the party, or do you think that that type of a primary battle is actually something that would strengthen the party? I think it definitely would strengthen the party. I know that that's really contrary to popular belief, yep. but we the thing that you have to remember is elected officials are put in office by the voters. At the end of the day, the voters are the ones who determine if they keep if they keep their job. Um, so having a primary challenger really keeps the incumbent in check as to what their true values are, what they stand for, and frankly what their track record was for the time that they were in office and see if they're deserving of, of uh, re-election. Excellent. Um, let, me, let me close by asking you, what, what do people, what should people know about Erica Johnson? What? What are you trying to let people know about who you are as a person, who you are as a candidate, and what type of a state representative you'd make? Of course. So, I've lived here since I was four years old. I went through the public school system. I was so grateful for all of the opportunities that were afforded to me between Strings Attached, a great marching band, um, going to the sporting events. I mean, Wilmington really does have a truly remarkable public school system. I think it's really important that we maintain that, and if not, um, better fund our schools to make sure that we're all getting a quality education that's preparing us for the current and future job markets. Um, I moved back here after college for my student loans, um, which many young people are also facing. Absolutely. I'm working in the energy efficiency sector, so that's something that I'm really interested in and really want to fight for on Beacon Hill. Um, I'm also really involved with al Alzheimer's advocacy. My grandmother has Alzheimer's. She lives in the district, in the memory care facility, and I was really honored to have my campaign kick off officially um, at that facility, oh, just to nice. honor my work with advocacy. So I want to be totally accessible. I want to be the person that speaks up for working families, for the elderly, for our students, really legislates with future generations in mind and really thinks about, you know, what what an impact every piece of legislation coming across my desk, how it would impact future generations. Um, yeah. Excellent. I'm young and I have the energy to do it. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I think it's great that uh, we've had a number of candidates uh, that we have come out. I think it's great. We're getting Definitely. a bunch of different voices. It, it, it's allowing for uh, some excellent discussion of the issues that are going on. It's always good when you have uh, a vibrant debate about uh, about uh, issues that are going on, and I especially like the fact that we do have uh, a lot of different demographic sectors represented. Uh, you know, male, female, uh, Wilmington, Tewksbury, uh, folks who've been older generation, younger generation. It's it's a nice mix, and it should make for a uh, an interesting. Definitely.